Hello everyone, I am Jennifer the Divine Levine and today, I'm going to scooch over a little bit so I can get more in the middle of the camera frame. Today we are going to be talking about preparing ahead when you are doing the raw vegan thing. And also I wanted to continue documenting my COVID-19 vacation. So yesterday was the 4th of July so I took it off. Although, I did do some stuff. I did go outside and weed whack most of the backyard. Yay me, but of course, my weed whacker, the bat it comes with two batteries because each battery will last maybe 15, 20 minutes. I don't know, possibly longer. But so anyway, I weed whacked a good portion of my backyard, so I need to go out there again in a couple days and finish that once my batteries are, <laughs> once all the batteries are done charging, you know? And what else did I do yesterday? So I was out of water and I kept procrastinating. Didn't want to leave the house. Didn't want to leave the house. Didn't want to leave the house. Finally, around two o'clock, after much fussing and uh, playing with my hair, actually putting on makeup, I had ordered some makeup from Raw Skin Ceuticals and some of their skincare, which skincare is actually very nice, but I don't really care for the makeup all that much, but maybe if I had a sponge to put it on with, who knows. So I went out to Target to get some water where they have distilled water for 85 cents a gallon, yes. And I also bought two pounds of bananas for $1.59. Yes, they have organic bananas at Target for $1.59, so major, major, um, wow, I mean, that's great. So I just went in and <laughs> bought all their lost leaders and left the store, ooey. <laughs> and then I kind of thought about how I wanted to have one of, because it's the 4th of July, I wanted to have a burger and I wanted to have chips and this and that. So I checked out if Natural Grocers was open, they were not. Trader Joe's was not open, and I'm like, okay, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. So I had a seaweed salad, I had a regular salad, um, and then my one splurge was to eat some of those spice cupcakes with some of the leftover frosting that I had from a ways back from, from some other cakes that I made. It was just a wee bit. So I had that and some of the cake chips that I made as well. I don't think I'll be making cake chips again, at least not with that recipe. I don't know. I mean, my thing with cake, most of the time it's kind of like, it's not worth eating if it's not chocolate. If it's not chocolate, I ain't gonna eat it, sorry. No, I mean, I'll eat it, you know. But I didn't, I ran out of cacao powder and I wasn't gonna buy any cocoa powder. So um, I have some in my Amazon cart just waiting. I need to put some more stuff in my Amazon cart so I can have $25 so I can get free shipping. So I'm waiting for that. And uh, so I've been on this internet journey just kind of looking around at all sorts of things, you know. I came across this recipe to repair your hair. As you can see, my hair is, you know, it's like the top is, is kind of good, but the bottom is kind of dry and frizzy. And so I came across this recipe, oh, it was on one of those curly girl websites, naturallycurly.com, I think. And it had a recipe for, it was three tablespoons of coconut oil, two egg yolks, and a teaspoon and a half of honey. Now, I looked at those ingredients and I thought, well, I don't really buy honey, although honey really is good for you. And there are some vegans, I mean, technically, I don't know. There, there's some controversy over whether or not if you consume honey, are you truly vegan? I think for me, it's more about the fact that most of the honey that you can buy is not real honey. So here's a tip. If it's liquid in the jar, hmm. Maybe not. Real honey in the jar is gonna be crystallized and you would wanna buy raw honey. Although I don't know if raw honey would work in that particular hair recipe. So after taking out the egg yolks and the honey, which I don't happen to have on hand and I don't feel like running out the store to get it, we're just basically left with three, three tablespoons of coconut oil. But then I thought, you know what? I need some, um, what do you call it? It's the flaxseed gel. I made some of that and it's in my fridge 
And I thought, wow, if I mix that with the coconut oil, who knows? So I'm gonna try that and see how that works. And so tomorrow when you see my hair, you'll be like, oh! Or maybe it'll still be oily, I don't know. I mean, I might, who knows how long I'll keep that. I was thinking I'll keep the coconut on overnight, but then um, maybe leave it on and then, cause tomorrow is, um, a wash day or I could wait another day because you're supposed to doing the curly girl method you're supposed to wait as long as you possibly can before washing your hair <sighs> for me if I go out in the yard and I do yard work I'm washing my hair if I go to the store and I'm around other people and God knows what kind of germs are out there I'm washing my hair so that's one of the reasons why I try not to leave the house and whenever I'm going to do a dirty job, I want to do that on a day when I am going to be washing my hair. If I'm not doing anything really dirty, then I'm okay with not washing my hair. But, you know. All right. So, on to what we were going to talk about today after all that blathering on. Um, so, this is a jar with some pistachio nuts in it. This is all the pistachios that were left over from the last bag when I made the pistachio ravioli. There's not a whole lot in here. This is about maybe a third of a cup of pistachios, if that. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna make salad dressing with this. And I wanna show you some salad dressing that I made yesterday. As you can see, it is a lovely color of green. And this greenness, comes from the zucchini that's in it. One of my, uh, one of the bloggers that I, that I watch is Raw Tani, and in her recipe videos, she uses a lot of zucchini in her dressings. And this is to make the dressings low fat. It's to take up volume in the dressing so you can keep your dressings as low fat as possible. Now I had a couple of uh, just maybe about a quarter cup of cashews hanging out in its water in the fridge that I hadn't used and I thought oh, I better use those up I'm gonna make some salad dressing so I took about it was about they were soaked of course um, I scooped them out of the water because the water's really good and I like to drink it <laughs> So I skipped the cashews out. Plus also if I had added the water into the blender with the zucchini and everything, it might have been too much water and you don't want to eat because zucchini has a lot of water in it. So it was about a quarter cup of the soaked cashews that I scooped out of the jar and put in the blender. And then I put in about half of a mm, medium to large zucchini. I And then I put the rest of that zucchini in my salad. And I blended that up with a clove of garlic and some salt. And I don't think I put anything else in there. Maybe I put some spices in there? I don't know. But you can add whatever you want, whatever you, oh no, I added dill to it. Yes, dill. And dill in your salad dressing is gonna make it taste like a ranch dressing. So this is a salad dressing right here. And let me just move the camera so you can Trying to maybe take a look. I'll just pan the camera so you can see the texture of the dressing. It was really, really, oops. <laughs> I have to tighten that later. It was really, really delicious dressing. And um, as you were tasting, you could kind of tell that it had a high um, water consistency in comparison to oil. So this could be considered a low fat vegan dressing and it's actually quite delicious and I thought oh that's good because you know you don't want to eat too much fat that is um one of the things that was drilled into me by the medical medium don't eat too much fat a lot of raw vegans eat a lot a lot of fat I know that uh Kara um Kara and Marcus they in a lot of their recipes they are just very generous with all the fats and the oils and all these things and I was watching a video with her recently, and she was talking about how she had this new work, uh, breakthrough in her workouts, like, oh, and I look, and her arms were actually looking like, bam, you know? And uh, because usually when you would look at a Kara video, you'd see Kara and she would have these really skinny arms, you know, and that's fine, you know, people can be skinny, that's cool, you know, it doesn't bother, it doesn't bother me. But, um, you know, this, 
video, she's talking about her workout breakthrough is like, you know, she's got the delts and she's got the biceps and it's like, bam, you know? And I was like, wow, what a huge transformation for her. And she talked about how she did it. And it was basically, uh, instead of eating a salad, blending the salad, because the fact is, is that most people do not chew their food. <laughs> John Culler will talk about that quite a bit. Makes him angry. So I thought about that and I thought, am I really chewing my food? And so, um, yeah, I mean, chewing your food thoroughly is, is a very good practice, but most people do not do it. Even, even me, you know, um, sometimes I have to catch myself. I'm like, wait a minute, I'll just swallowed a huge chunk. That's not good. Okay. But the point was, is that the concentrated nutrition that you get when you blend your food, when you blend all that stuff up that goes in the salad, which Kara apparently was doing to get the, the workout breakthrough, whatever, uh, was going to help her gain weight. And that's fine for her, but I don't want to be gaining any weight. I think I'm fine the way I am. I could actually stand to lose a little bit, bit of fatliness. And some of you out there will be like, no, you don't need to lose any weight. No, <laughs> it's okay. I am what I am, and I'm happy with that for now, right? Because all we have is the now. So anyway, this is soaked, and after about two days, which is, you know, I will run out of this before two days. So I may have to make a different kind of dressing before this is ready to be blended and made into a dressing. But the upside of the using the pistachios is that they are a relative of the cashews, and you can also drink this water too. So sweet, right? Okay, now in this jar here, because I found a huge bag of black eyed peas in my pantry, I thought, you know, I, I really should eat those up. Um, if I have to cook them, I will, but I'm soaking them right now. And you can't even see in this jar. And that's what I hate about this jar is that this label sticks, really sticks on. This is, um, this is Dr. Bronner's organic virgin coconut oil. This is excellent coconut oil, by the way. And these jars are excellent to repurpose because they're so big. And the thing about beans, um, especially garbanzo beans, is they expand when you add water to them. So I filled this up to about, I think it was about to here. Maybe it was up to here, not sure, with the black eyed peas. And then I put some water in to soak and we'll, we'll see how how much water they absorb and everything so what i will do with these tomorrow or maybe at the end of the day depending if they've soaked up all this water by the end of the day i can rinse them and then put them back in here to to sprout in the refrigerator i live in tucson arizona it's very hot here so i don't think leaving this out to sprout would be a good idea mainly because I set some buckwheat out to sprout and after a day or two, it spoiled. And I was heartbroken because I love buckwheat so much and it didn't even sprout. And I wondered, you know, is this like a real living buckwheat? I don't know. I mean, it should have sprouted, maybe it didn't, or I don't know. I mean, next time with the buckwheat, I will soak it in the refrigerator drain it, rinse it, put it back in the fridge to sprout because sprouting stuff out of the fridge, mm, I don't know. The sunflower seeds, which I have right here in this colander, I have these out. I had soaked these a couple days ago. I took them out of the fridge last night, rinsed them, put them in the colander, left them out overnight. They have not sprouted yet. I keep watering them. And so hopefully these guys will sprout. I think, I think I've successfully sprouted outside the refrigerator with these. So I think I can do that with these. I don't think these will spoil, but who knows? Maybe I should put these in a jar. <laughs> At least it will free up the colander, right? And let's see, what else do I have to say about my COVID-19 vacation? 
I don't know if I mentioned it in this video because I'm having a little trouble. I, this is the this is my third take on the videos. The other one I tried to make in black and white just to be fun, but no, couldn't do it. So I'm like, all right, this is fine. And so I was talking to my friend Rebecca yesterday while well, texting because you know nobody talks anymore. And we occasionally have phone conversations, but she was telling me that she was telling she had an, she had this video on zucchini fritters on. In, uh, not Instagram on um, on Facebook. So if you're a friend of my friend Becca, you can go over to Facebook and you can find it. You know, you'll know who I'm talking about. And um, I don't want to like, you know, uh, how can I say this? Um, anyway, so she made uh, zucchini fritters, which were these little mozzarella medallions that you can get at the grocery and the kind that come in water and those are actually really really delicious or i mean i don't eat them anymore obviously but uh, you can actually make a mozzarella cheese that's vegan and you could probably buy one too um, miyoko's might have that maybe at whole foods i don't know i haven't checked it out but the zucchini fritters were kind of cool because she took a piece of zucchini and she wrapped it around that mozzarella cheese and she stuck it in the air fryer. Oh wait, she breaded it before she stuck it in the air fryer. But apparently they were really delicious. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna stay raw or whatever, but the, um, the air fryer that I have broke and I called the company and they said, well, we are back ordered, but we will be sending you a new one. And I said, okay, that's good. But the air fryer has not arrived, so. There it is, can't try it. And what else do Rebecca, oh, Rebecca also made a video with the pistachio ravioli. And the way she made it was she took a whole sheet of the um, pasta, the rice wrapper, she took a whole rice wrapper and she put the pistachio cheese in the middle and then she just kind of rolled it up. And it makes a really, really big ravioli. And actually, I kind of like what she did because what you can do with that is you can just dip it in your sauce and eat it, dip and eat, dip and eat. It's much easier than having to cut. You know how it is when you're, you're eating properly and you have your ravioli out in front of you and maybe you would cut it into pieces to make it bite-sized to fit in your mouth. Well, cutting those rice wrappers is not a very easy thing to do. So I do believe that Rebecca's method of using the the big uh, the big sheets and making the bigger raviolis is is a good practice. And then also you can think of it this way: you can think of it in terms of servings. So for example, if you had one of those big raviolis wrapped up and you ate that, and maybe that would be like a serving or half a serving, depending on how much you wanted to eat. All right. Well. I think that pretty much covers us today. I didn't do any workout yesterday except for the backyard. And I noticed that my arms are getting much stronger from doing the weed whacking. Now all I need to do is I need to find an arborist because I am, well, anyway. That's another topic for another time, my trees. Oh God, my trees. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful Sunday. I am going to go back to bed and read. I'm reading a couple of interesting things. I, You know what? I would have to look on my phone to tell you what I'm reading, but I finished reading a novel that was recommended by one of those vegan, uh, no, yeah, she was a vegan vlogger. And it was, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the title. The one I'm reading now is Peach Something. I don't know, I'll have to write these down and have them ready for you next time to talk about the, the books that I'm reading right now. So I'm currently reading those. And then, oh, also, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. I thought I had a copy of it around the house because I'm a huge Robert Heinlein fan, but I did not, so I had to go to the library. I had to put it on hold, and they only had it in the audio format. So I will listen to that. And I will be back again tomorrow to continue the documentation of my COVID-19 journey. <laughs> I mean, my COVID-19 vacation. Yeah, <laughs> the vacay. 
the isolation, being all alone, which is fine. I'm okay with it. Hope everyone else out there is too. And uh, wear your masks, everybody. Bye.